Okay, this chapter is about criminal law, like a little bit about cybercrime. So criminal, civil law and criminal law, we talked a little bit about the difference in our first chapter, civil law and criminal law. Um, uh, the difference, one of the main differences is that the burden of proof in civil law is preponderance of the evidence. The verdict has to be a, by a min majority, so not everybody in the jury has to agree guilty or not guilty, but the majority has to say guilty or not guilty, right? in civil uh, law. In criminal, it has to be proof beyond reasonable doubt. In other words, there's no way that you're not guilty. You uh, if there's a guilty verdict, it has to be beyond reasonable doubt, and all 12 jurors have to say, have to agree, yes, guilty, right? Um, if not, that is, uh, the, the trial means that they, they don't find him guilty. They could not agree that the person is guilty, right? Uh, criminal sanctions versus civil sanctions. In criminal law, you get punishment, right? Versus remedies to the injured party. In civil law, somebody sues somebody else for reimbursing them for their financial losses or something like that, right? You you broke my wall when you did construction here. I want to be reimbursed for the cost of replacing the wall. $10,000, right? Versus um, you stole something, it's a criminal offense, you go to jail for a year for that, right? So um, um, punishment versus remedy. Um, civil liability for criminal acts. Some torts, we co cover torts in chapter three, also have criminal liability, such as assault and battery, and provide a basis of criminal prosecution as well as tort action. Right. So, yes, Diego. Uh, I was curious. Um, this might be kind of a dumb question, but uh, no the, dumb questions. TV judges are they like in court, or is that just like they sign on to have a mediator decide their case? You mean something like Judge Judy? Oh yeah, yeah, like TV yeah, judges. which is small claims court, I think, right? But but uh, no, I think my 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 guess is people that have cases they waive their rights to go to real court, and the 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 judge is a real judge. It's not an actor or actress, right? And the judge decides the case there, right? Okay. And 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 that will be the outcome. The, the the people that agree to participate will not have the option to say, oh well, I don't like that judge's decision. I'm going to go to court anyway. Right. So that's that's most likely how most of them are, are made, yeah, uh, because they are real cases, right, and they are real judges. All right, uh, classification of crimes, felony is the highest. It's a crime such as arson, arson, murder, rape, robbery that carries the most severe sanctions ranging from what, more than one year in state or federal prison or even up to the death penalty. That's a crime, so um, that's the highest... Um, 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 a felony is the highest level of crime, right? And that stays on your record for very long. Misdemeanor is a lesser crime than a felony, felony punishable by a fine or incarceration in jail for up to one year. If you have a misdemeanor, you can go to jail up to one year maximum. If it's more than that, it would be a crime. But they decide that not based on the punishment they give, but the the the... Uh, district attorney will charge somebody either with a crime or a mis uh, I mean with a felony or a misdemeanor, depending on what they are seeking. If they are seek going to seek three years in prison, they're going to charge somebody with a felony, right? Uh, petty offense is less serious kind of criminal offense, such as uh, um, traffic or building code violations. So they are not really, um, um, they're not misdemeanors. But traffic offenses can be misdemeanors or even a felony if what happens. <clears throat> what kind of traffic offense could also be a, uh, or traffic situation could also be a felony? Oh, Mike. Oh, I was going to say misdemeanor. <laughs> or misdemeanor, yeah. Uh, my friend lives in uh, Virginia and they're super, super strict over there. He was going like 110 miles an hour. They wanted to put him in jail for a year. They yes, want, they wanted to. They didn't, but they could. They didn't get it. They could it because it's yeah. called. You know, they call it the different category of reckless driving, right? Uh, Elsa, what you were I saying? I think with the drug, to drive with drugs and something less. Can if you're intoxicated, I think that could probably be charged as a misdemeanor. It's not just a petty offense. And what else, Diego? Oh, I was going to say DUIs. DUIs, and and then a few. Yes, Angel. Oh, I was going to say another one that I kind of learned uh, at a baseball game. 
So, uh, oh. yeah, so when I ran into the field and I was next to an officer, what I happened, I asked him what, it, what he would get for that. And he said, most likely a misdemeanor. Yes, yeah. So, and, and he was unlucky. That person was unlucky because an officer was there who was a good witness, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Amongst other witnesses, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, if you uh, kill somebody while driving drunk, the involuntary <laughs> manslaughter, that's definitely a crime. Right. Yes, um, Veronica? I was listening to the news this morning regarding, I guess, some uh, uh, something to do with the government. Someone's wife was driving and ran over someone claiming that that person Mur jumped. Are you talking about the murder? I think Rudolph so. Murdoch's yes, wife. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and and the officer let her go and yes. said it was a uh, uh, like, yeah. oh just you know, are you that's, gonna answer these yeah. questions? So yeah. it's there's a show on Netflix about that. Oh, right? is there? It's the oh, Murdoch okay. trials, yeah. Yeah. Eleanor? Uh, what would be an example of a building code violation? An example of building code violation. Can somebody yeah. think of an example of building code violation? Diego? Uh, I saw one happen. Um, and building without a permit, I think. Be... Building without a permit, yeah. using uh, uh, unapproved construction materials that could yeah. cause harm to, to people that use that building. Yeah, we had neighbors who like started building during COVID and we were like, that's interesting because the city for sure is not processing any permits right now because it's like they're not coming out. Yeah, to, it shut yeah. down, but they just started building. Did, did so. you check or ask ever um, ask them? No, we never asked them. <laughs> well, it could have been that they got the permit before COVID. Yeah. yeah so it, you never know. It's, yeah. It yeah. seems very like like fishy. no one's gonna check. It's a little fishy, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, corporate criminal liability, liability of the corporate entity. So crimes must occur within scope of employment. So if there's a crime that was, what does it mean scope of employment? Job duties? Yeah, it has to be, yeah, it has to be, uh, per, uh, the crime has to be committed while you do it on your job, performing your job duties, or maybe not performing that, but during work hours and things like that, right? Then it would be a crime. Then the corporation or the corporate officers can be held liable, right? Uh, besides the employee who commits the crime, the corporate um, entity can also be held liable. Uh, a corporation can be held criminally liable when they fail to fulfill certain statutory duties. So they don't follow certain laws and that uh, that uh, can, um, leads to somebody committing a crime within that organization, um, they can be held liable. Um, so here's an example that's in the textbook, United States versus Sin. So uh, there was a, uh, it was Sin owned a motel and rented the rooms I think hourly or something like that, right? Any time or day or night, any, you know. And 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 the customers were, you know, prostitu prostitutes and their johns, right? So and and that is a crime. Prostitution is a crime, right? Um, so um, uh, the hotel owner was able was held liable, criminally liable, because he knowingly provided that space for a criminal act to occur. Right. They don't discount rates also. What's it? They don't discount rates. They don't discount rates too. Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. Use it for less hours, you know, you get a discount. You know, you repeat customers. Yeah. Uh, so corporate officers and directors can be liable as well. And that's a very often the case in white collar crimes, right? Anyway, let's talk about violent crimes. Violent crimes are crimes against a person such as murder and rape. Robbery is a violent crime as well, where you forcefully take things, right? Um, property crimes, most common involves money or property. Burglary is the unlawful entry into a, a building and taking and removing things from it, right? Larceny is wrongfully taking somebody else's property. It doesn't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to enter somebody's property, but, but you know, in public, you could steal something, right? Uh, obtaining goods by false pretense. What does that mean? Diego. You could like pretend to be uh, a debt collector and say, hey, you took out a loan. Uh, you know what? We'll call it square. Just give me your car. Yes. Or just give me a thousand dollars and I'll, yeah, whatever. Your car is a little bit too obvious because it has to, the trans registration has to be transferred. It might be too complicated. Those are, you know, scanners basically, yeah. right? 
Yeah. Um, or using um, else somebody else's card. name, somebody else's oh, credit know. card, and applying for a loan by committing identity theft and things like that, Rob, right? So that's uh, obtaining goods by false pretense, receiving stolen goods. That's a property crime. If you receiving it means you could also buy stolen goods. You buy a bicycle on Craigslist. It's a $10,000 mountain bike and you buy it for $500. You think it's probably stolen, but I didn't steal it. Can you be held liable criminally? Yes. Angel. That actually uh, happened to me once when I was uh, in elementary school. Oh, okay. I so tell, this, tell yeah, us about it. Yeah, I was in like third or fourth grade. I met this kid in the park and I liked the bike. It's like, oh, you like it? You can have it. It was around my age too. And then uh, I took it to school the next day and the father caught you. <laughs> you didn't know. Well, you, at that I age, you had no idea, right? Yeah. He, like, took me to the office. I didn't hear the end of it. And the other yeah, kid, the, the, the other the kid who gave it to you got in trouble? Uh, the, it oh. turns out the kid um, was friends with, like, the owner of the bike. And he went over to his house. They played together. And then ever since that day, he never returned to the bike. Well. Okay, yeah. yeah. I see. So, yeah, this happened in third grade, so it didn't go to court or anything like that. But very, yeah, very, thanks for sharing that example. Yeah, the, uh, a bicycle that was taken without um, permission from the original owner and given to somebody else. Right, yeah. So, you gotta be careful when you buy goods. Um, you know, if you buy some stolen goods, sometimes you might not even know they're stolen, right? So, you should verify that they are not stolen, right? Um, if you can't, or if you, it seems like, yeah, they're not stolen, you buy them, and uh, there's an investigation, and they find, they find, let's say, you pay $2,000 for a mountain bike. That's usually $10,000. Mountain bikes are very expensive. Does anybody mountain bike? Does anybody ever there? The high-end mountain bikes are very expensive. Mountain bikes, like yeah. Easily $10,000 for a really good mountain bike. You bought it for $2,000. That's still a lot of money, right? And then there's a, some investigation, and they somebody knocks at your door, police, and they say, can we see that mountain bike? We have a lead that it's a stolen bike. And then you're like, oh, I, I bought it on Craigslist. I didn't know. And then the police probably will, will believe you that you didn't know, but they will take the bike. And you lost your $2,000 and you don't get to keep the bike because it doesn't belong to you. You're not going to get your money back from the crook who stole it anyway, right? Yeah. So... Um, um, so it's um, definitely you have to be careful. So receiving stolen goods is, is um, uh, a property crime. Arson, intentionally burning off a building, right? Forgery, fraudulent, making or altering writing that changes the legal rights of another, like forging a signature on a check, for example, right? Public order crimes, most common ones include public drunkenness. It is a crime to be drunk in public or excessively drunk in public, I should say when you are not behaving properly, harassing people maybe and things like that, right? Prostitution is a crime, gambling in most states, right? Um, except Nevada, but it's very controlled, right? And illegal drug use. I was a jury uh, on a jury one time in San Jose um, um, for a drug use case. Um, um, Young man got caught. He wasn't that young. He was maybe in his late twenties, early thirties, or something like that. He was like much older, most of them. But um, uh, he got caught using methamphetamine, and he admitted it to the police officer that he had it, and he had some in his possession too. And um, for some reason, the people on the jury that I was on, they were like, "Yeah, but no. What if this? What if that?" They really didn't. It was a small case, so they didn't really put that much effort into really educating us how we should judge and how we should uh, decide and things like that. So we couldn't agree, probably about half and half said guilty, half not guilty or something like that. Or oh, actually, no, more that more of us said guilty, maybe two said not guilty. So he was um, held not guilty for the crime of uh, possessing and using methamphetamines in public. And afterwards, I talked to the district attorney to ask what would have happened if he had found been found guilty. She said, it's really sad because we would have 
not even send him to jail because it was first offense. We would have just required some drug treatment for him. That's all, right? So, uh, loss, loss case. Um, white collar crimes, I mentioned it briefly, uh, that is often committed by corporate officers, but can be committed by any level of employee, right? Uh, embezzlement is a common one, is fraudulent appropriation of funds. Basically funds that belong to the company or maybe to a customer or somewhere else, somebody else's funds and you embezzle that money, really transfer it over some corners here and there and then where you get, eventually end up with the money. That's embezzlement. A lot of times it can happen in accounting departments, right? Because they have control of the flow of money and they can do things where they can kind of try to hide it, right? That's, nobody's going to miss that money. Right. Uh, bribery. What's bribery? Paying someone to get advancements. Yes, paying someone to get advancements. That's a white collar crime. You're not allowed to do that in the United States, right? Um, and even if you're a U.S. company and you go to other countries, you are not allowed to do that in other countries, even if it is legal in other countries. As a U.S. corporation, you are not allowed to commit bribery. Period. Right. Um, several years ago, Walmart was caught committing bribery in Mexico. They were paying foreign officials in Mexico, you know, Mexican officials. They were paying them bribery money to get permits to build uh, the plant and everything, and they got caught. Yes, Justin? George said Santos just got caught. Oh, after. yeah, there was something, right? What did he do? What was it? He was in charge of, like, foreign relations, but I think, like, Egypt... And they were giving him gold bars to like allow, and he got caught as he was going to Egypt searching out how much does a gold bar worth. And he's running for president. Also, look up Justice Clarence Thomas. He has he hasn't been charged with anything, and because he always has an answer why he did things, but he has done some things. Yeah, uh, he knows a lot of rich people who gave him a lot of money, and then he ruled a certain way as a Supreme Court justice. Right. Um, so um, definitely big problem. It's a big problem in other countries. It's even a bigger problem. But in other countries, it's not frowned upon as much as here. Right. It doesn't mean that it doesn't happen in the States. It still happens, but they might call it something else and do it in a way where it doesn't look like bribery. I'm not saying it's not happening. Yes. Angel. Uh, I've noticed that happens a lot, um, like car accidents. How does it happen in car accidents? Uh, for example, I know someone that got into a car accident uh, last week and other people also that have gone into car accidents and they always say that the person that's at fault uh, will immediately start offering the money if they don't call the cops or like... Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe because they're drunk or something, they don't want the cops in. Uh, maybe you should carry some cash in your car just in case. <laughs> I don't know. They say five hundred bucks. No, like for me, it, it happened, but oh. mine was a little ding. Oh, nothing. Where I was turning left at a light, and the person behind me hit me lightly. Very. It, it was a tap, and I got off my car to go look, and I noticed there was probably a tiny little scratch that you could remove it. Yeah. It's like, hey, please don't call the cops. Hispanic. Maybe he didn't have a driver's license. Maybe illegal. I'll pay you. I go over and look. I'm like. It's fine. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Actually, it's really sad. Um, well, I was driving down the road and I was looking to talk to the other guy, but it's a guy who's got a heavy brake with like soft. Oh yes. Uh huh. Brakes, and I drank some as soon as possible and tapped the guy on like just like a small scratch on the back and he got the cops on me. Oh. Because of that, so um, that was. Yeah, you know, that same scenario happened to my daughter and, and somebody like quick, she was in the left turn lane and somebody quickly got in front of her in the left turn lane and came to an immediate stop and she bumped that car. But she was able, the insurance found my, my, my daughter not guilty because they pulled in and they stopped immediately and somehow they believed my daughter, even though she was a young driver, right? And, and the other one was a middle-aged woman, but my daughter, you know, she did, was not held responsible. You never know, right? But anyway, um, so bankruptcy fraud. When companies file for bankruptcy, they can't commit fraud and take out funds first and 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 hide money, so they don't have to pay all the debt. Because when you file bankruptcy, you <clears throat> you don't have to pay your debt, right? So, but if you commit fraud while filing bankruptcy, that's a white collar crime. Theft of trade secrets. 
<clears throat> we talked about trade secrets when we talked about intellectual property. That's a crime. You can be criminally charged if you steal trade secrets as an employee or as a competition and so forth, right? Insider trading, purchase or sale of securities on a basis of information, of information not available to the public. So this is for publicly traded companies. And insiders, basically people that work there, they can also buy and sell the stock of the company they work for. But they really shouldn't because they have insider information that others don't have. For example, a large company, before their uh, uh, quarterly reports come out, how they did on sales, if they surpass the sales, if they did better than expected, their stock is going to go up. If they did worse than expected, their stocks are going to go down, right? If you're inside, you already know if they outperformed or underperformed, right? So you let's say you know they outperformed and nobody outside knows. They're just going to wait for it to become public and then they can buy. But if you're inside, you already buy more stocks or tell your spouse or your friend who's not directly related to the company to buy because they're going to hit the roof. The stock is going to hit the roof. Uh, that's insider trading because that doesn't make it a fair, fair playing field because now you have information that the public doesn't have. And, you know, the benefit the company gets for, for being publicly traded is that they get investments from the public, from anybody who's out there, right? And, and it's got to be fair. So the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, oversees that. Yes, Diego? Uh, in terms of, like, theft or trade secrets, um, what's the policy of like, whistleblowers, things like that? It's another oh, in general, whether it's, it's, it's insider trading, there's more whistleblowing on insider trading than theft of trade secrets, by the way. There's a lot of whistleblowing cases that we know of here. The, the theft of trade secrets might not even go public, right? The, but uh, uh, yes, there's whistleblower protection now because of an, uh, the year 2000 or early 2000s, there was an Enron case, which was which involved insider trading and the company basically went out of business after the scandal. There was a whistleblower, I think her name was Shannon Watson, and she reported it and they didn't do anything. And then they retaliated against her. They moved her to another position or something like that, right? Um, and then she finally went to the media and told the media, and that's how it all came out, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there, back then, there was no legal whistleblower protection. Now, today, if you um, snitch or tell on a company for doing something wrong, they cannot retaliate against you. If they fire you, you can successfully sue them uh, for you know, lost wages and things like that. If they demote you and all that, all the losses, you can you can ask for a lot of remedies, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and that's called, actually that act is called the Sarban Oxley Act that came out mm -hmm. after um, Enron, uh, or they call it Sox Act sometimes, right? That includes whistleblower protection. It also includes transparency of how company, public companies report their financials. It has to be transparent. The auditing company has to be a separate third, independent third party it's uh, with enron the auditing company and 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 enron were in bed together they were like uh, cooking the books together anderson's university arthur anderson it was arthur anderson but his consulting firm oh his consulting firm. yeah and it went under. oh okay yeah yeah the, it uh, went under it was one of the top four accounting firms it went under yeah it was one of the yeah doesn't they were, exist anymore. they were the top five yeah. back then yeah <laughs> Anyway, how can people defend themselves to criminal liability? Justifiable use of force. I had to do it. I had to apply force or for self-defense or something like that, right? Um, uh, because if I didn't do this, I could have gotten hurt or somebody else could have gotten hurt. That is sometimes a defense. Sometimes not. You really have to prove that it was self-defense. You can't just beat somebody up and say, oh, it was self-defense. They threatened me. The big guy comes and beats me up. He can't claim that was self-defense, obviously, right? But it's not always that obvious. Uh, in necessity, I had to do it. When could you have to do something? Yes. In threatening your, like they're on your land or property or anything like that, or they're threatening someone you care about. Or something like that. That's kind of self-defense, right? That's your self -defense. Yeah, necessity. I had to commit this crime. Diego? Oh, oh yes. Uh, like someone was pressuring you to do something that you didn't want to do and you... yeah that's duress that is definitely a defense but that's duress somebody's kind of forcing you to do it justin okay. 
I don't know if this counts, but I know, say you're driving and you need to like drive up onto the sidewalk if like a, a fire truck's coming because there's no I know it's illegal, but it's a necessity. Yeah, very good example. If you're driving down the road and, and there's a fire truck coming and you pull up on the sidewalk, which you're not supposed to do as a car, you had to do it to let the fire truck pass. Or even simpler idea, if somebody runs on the street and the only place you can go to avoid them is on the sidewalk. And maybe you even hit somebody else on the sidewalk. So, um, or you go the other way and you have a head-on collision with a car to avoid that person. Or maybe you don't, maybe that was a lesser damage. You know, I can do this, I'm still gonna cause damage, but it's gonna be less. If I run this person over, I'm gonna kill them. But if I hit this car, none of us are is going to die. So you make that those quick decisions in your mind, right? So that's that that's when it's an that's an example of necessity. Insanity, you basically claim you had didn't have the mental capability at the moment that you committed the crime. And it's very, very difficult to prove that, of course. You can't just say, oh, I didn't know what I was doing. There's, there would be psychological evaluations, exams by both sides, not just the district attorney's um, uh, um, expert witnesses. They're called expert witnesses when you get pull in experts. But the, the defendant will also have their own expert witnesses, things like that, right? Testing and examination and all that stuff, right? Sometimes they use the term temporary insanity. In other words, I'm not really crazy, but at that very moment, I just got crazy and I'm normal again. That's kind of what it sounds like, but it is possible. You can claim temporary insanity. Um, you know, you can just, things can blow up in your mind because of something else. Diego? Uh, I was gonna say like, I, I did once I think see an interview um, with a police officer and an actual person who was deemed a sociopath in criminal court. Um, and like, yeah, it'd be really hard to replicate that because it was a very disturbing interview. Like. He had no self-preservation, like he just admitted to his crimes, mm -hmm. um, but without like any change in his tone of voice, even after he murdered someone. No compassion, not no feelings, no. nothing. And so sociopath is different. They will be charged for their crimes and they will not be put back in public. But if you can successfully prove temporary insanity, you might be, you know, if you can prove it, if it's really, if it was really the case and you can prove it, uh, you might not uh, be charged for the crime, but they might send you to some treatment or something like that. But in a sociopath case, it's uh, definitely um, um, no brainer. They're gonna have to be locked up for the pub for, uh, for the sake of public safety, right? Uh, it can be a mistake. I did it by mistake. You might still be charged, but maybe a lesser charge. I didn't know I bought the bike that was stolen. Right? Or I caused an accident by mistake. I run somebody over by mistake. You probably will be charged still a lot of times, but it'll be a lesser charge maybe, right? There's voluntary and involuntary manslaughter. Yes, Eleanor? If you were, for example, under the influence and then you accidentally did something, but then if you weren't under the influence, you wouldn't usually do that? Would that still count as a mistake? Or no, no that wouldn't count as a mistake because you are, it's already a crime to, uh, it's already, well, depending on how drunk you are or whatever, to, to drive under the influence. Right. You're already breaking the law by that. You can't use it as, as an example, <laughs> uh, as an excuse. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Good question, though. Under duress is when somebody forces you to do something, right? You do this or I'm going to shoot you right now. Uh, entrapment, somebody set me up. They set me up to do this, right? Um, statute of limitations, does anybody know what that means? Yes. I think it's like a time limit in which you can be prosecuted for something. Yes, it's a time limit, and it depends. The, 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 the more severe the crime, the longer the statute of limitations. Sometimes there's no expiration, like in cases like murder and rape and things like that. But in smaller crimes, as, as, especially misdemeanors, there is a certain number of years that you can be charged for. Once that's over, they will not go after you anymore. Diego? Does double jeopardy fall under statute of limitations? A double jeopardy is you cannot be charged for the same crime twice. But like some like new evidence, right? You mean uh, statute of limitations? If statute of limitations is expired, is expired. Yeah. Yeah. That's a different double jeopardy is you can't be charged for the same crime twice, right? If the jury found you not guilty, they can't just say, oh, we're going to just try again and try to get a jury that finds them guilty. That, that would not be possible, right? 
Um, anyway, and then immunity is a diplomatic immunity. Usually you're, you have immunity. They can't really do anything. A lot of times they will send you to your home country. And a lot, uh, if the countries are friendly and they might be charged in that home country. Right. Anyway, let me see, was that the last? Oh, protection, oh, protection under the sixth and eighth amendment. So if you are charged, you still have rights, right? If you're charged with a crime. These are the rights. You have the right to a speedy trial. They can't, do, can't keep you in jail for 20 years and, uh, until you wait for your trial, right? Uh, you have the right to a jury trial. You can choose if you want a jury or a bench trial, right? Most uh, uh, criminal defendants use jury trials because it's harder to convince 12 people than you're guilty than one person who would be the judge, right? Right to a public trial, right to confront witnesses. If the district attorney brings a witness, you, your attorney has the right to confront that witness as well. Uh, right to counsel, you have the right to have an attorney, as we know, and if you can't afford one, the state will give you one. Prohibits excessive bail and fines. You know, this is a topic in the um, um, news, and you know they talk about uh, the bail system is not fair because somebody rich can pay, put out the bail for the same crime that somebody who's not rich can't pay that. Some um, proponents of this current system, or no, some people against the current system, they say bail should be based on your income, right? Which in a way, maybe it should be, right? Yeah. But anyway, uh, different topic. Anyway, prohibits cruel, cruel and unusual punishment. There's usually a scale of punishment you can get, like for example, if it's a misdemeanor, you can't be put in jail for more than one year and so forth, right? Uh, exclusionary rule, have you all have heard about Miranda rule? Prevents evidence obtained illegally or without proper search warrant. So, uh, uh, you know, often police officers have to have a search warrant before they can search you. This is because of our right to privacy and all that that we covered in chapter one, right? Um, so if they obtain evidence illegally, that cannot be used in court against you. Uh, the Miranda rule is based on Miranda versus Arizona. This was a rape case, and Miranda asked, argued that I wasn't told what my rights are or something like that, and, and I, did, I spoke to the police. I admitted it not knowing they were going to use it as evidence against me in court. So now they have the, since then they have the Miranda rule. Yes, Diego. Um, in terms of, say they search something illegally, uh, and then they like, gave it back, and then they used their eyewitness to that illegal substance to get it warrant afterwards. Is that no, not? No, no, you can't, you can't mingle with that. If you obtained it illegally, you can, let's say a, a police officer illegally searches a house and finds some drugs and then doesn't do anything about it, but then later on goes and gets a search warrant to find the drugs. That's, that would be, yeah, that would not work. If, if it was obtained illegally, you can't use it in court, right? Uh, okay, so then there are exceptions, public safety, safety uh, you, you, have, you can ask them about locations of weapons or dead bodies or, or if somebody is kidnapped, you have to, you know, you, 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 whether you read the Miranda rights or not, doesn't matter, you can uh, um, interrogate them about that, right? Last topic, real quick, cyber crime. Uh, it's computer crime and cyber crime. There's a cyber fraud, a, a misrepresentation knowingly made over the internet with the intention of deceiving another for the purpose of obtaining property or funds. So a lot of times it's a way of, you know, somebody is selling something, but they don't really have that. Concert tickets, sports game tickets, right? It happened to my daughter. She bought, I don't remember what concert it was, but I remember her and her friend wanted to go to a concert and, and they found third party tickets and they were quite an expense of 150 each, which was inexpensive because everybody else wanted $300 and stuff. I said, it's probably not real. She goes, no, no, no. And my friend's dad is going to go with us. We're going to pick them up. So I talked to the dad. He goes, yeah, yeah, I'll go. I'll make sure that everything is, 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 is good and proper and stuff like that. And he went there and they even took a picture of the guy's driver's license that sold them the tickets. And then they, my daughter and her friend went to the concert and they were no good, not good tickets. Yeah. So they stood there all upset. Like I told you. And uh, yeah, and they, you know, we reported to the police, the drivers, the ID was a fake ID. It wasn't even the real, real name on it, right? So be careful. I'm trying to get football tickets for my son. He's at the University of Colorado in Boulder and they have a new football coach. 
and he couldn't get the, he, he missed buying the student passes, so they're no more available. And they wanted to go, him and his girlfriend want to go to one game, and I'm looking online, so I'm talking to these people. It's very obvious those that are fake, you know, but, but still, some of them are pretty savvy. So I, one of them I talked to for a while, and it took me a while to figure out that it's fake, and I even showed my daughter. My daughter now is much, much savvier. She's 23, right? She's savvier than me, and she goes, look, mom, this is not how a person, an American mom would write this, you know? This is not even an English person that writes it like that and things like that, so be careful, yeah. Uh, thieves are not subject to physical limitations, like in the real world. Online, you know, it's sometimes hard to find them. There's identity theft, which you use somebody else's information to obtain goods. Phishing is when they try to find information about you, your passwords and things like that. When you get an email that says, oh, this is your bank, Bank of America, there has been a security breach, you need to log in and change your password immediately, and then they provide you a link to log in. You click on that link and you go to a website that looks exactly like the website that you use when you log into your bank account. But it's, as a matter of fact, it's not your website. It's somebody else that replicated the exact website copied it, basically downloaded it and uploaded it into another link, another URL, which you're not paying attention to because you're like, I gotta change my password, right? It's an old scam, but most of us know about it, but sometimes people don't know. You know, immigrants, elderly people, right? A lot of times it's the elderly that they go after, right? I, I'm gonna be that one day and I always tell my kids, you got, you have to look out for me, I'm, you know, and they will, they will, yeah. Uh, employment fraud, you know, getting employee information, credit card numbers that employees can commit fraud on the job by getting credit card numbers and giving them to other people to use, things like that. So that's a problem of the internet, right? Prosecution of cybercrime, the problem sometimes jurisdiction is difficult to find. Which court do we go to? Because people live in different areas, right? Uh, there is a Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, which means when it comes to, uh, deals with unauthorized access to data and criminal prosecution. So unauthorized access to data is when there are data breaches and things like that, right? Who is held liable? Is the company held liable? Yes, under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, the company, even the ISPs can be held liable. So this way, they're encouraged to do everything possible to keep, keep customer data safe. And there is criminal prosecution under that. That's it. I'm going to turn off the... Recording now.